Herc, as we have discussed often, and I think as was made very clear in this winter transfer window, it is dark, dark times in the U.S. goalkeeping pool. Yeah, but can I be honest? This, to me, has to be segmented because the losers, mm. all three goalkeepers, I, I'm not buying. And I'll start, I'll start, if you want, with Ethan Horvat. Ethan Horvat's level, I think, is championship. And he was in a Premier League team where he was a third-choice goalkeeper. And in comes a new goalkeeper, so now he's the fourth-choice goalkeeper. It's a goalkeeper who's shown a good level at the championship, who's shown good moments to use that championship level to get on the U.S. men's national team. And he finally gets to go somewhere where he's going to play and he's wanted and needed. Mm. I think this is a win for Ethan Horvat. so I will put him away from this loser. And then Zach Steffen. Zach Steffen's going to be 29. Goalkeeper who wasn't playing, coming off an injury, who was Greg Verhalter's man, like literally Greg Verhalter's guy, and wasn't good enough in Greg Verhalter's mind to be rostered as one of the three goalkeepers in a World Cup when he saw this kid from his infancy. And now you have a player who's coming off an injury who saw what the Premier League was like sitting behind uh, in Manchester City, goes to Middlesbrough, has some good moments, and then gets injured and thinks, at this age, what I need to do is play. And if playing at the Colorado Rapids gets me back anywhere near the National League picture, that's what I got to do. So I will separate these two. Matt Turner, on the other hand, that's a different story. You're the U.S. men's national team number one right now, clear number one. I think he's proven that with the U.S. men's national team. Uh, at the World Cup, regardless of how he got there and the decision Greg Berhalter made, he set records, U.S. men's national team records. He was very good, and he's been good in key moments for the U.S. men's national team. You said it, Casey said it, to an extent, he said it as well. He needs to be somewhere where he's playing. He was in a situation with Steve Cooper when Steve Cooper was there, where he was in and out of that starting role. Nuno Spiritu Santo gets there, who's now his coach, and he goes and purchases another goalkeeper. Now. Mm. Any other time, I'd be like, all right, he needs to prove himself. But when the coach happened to be a goalkeeper in his previous life, in his playing career, says, mm -hmm. you're not my goalkeeper, that is bad news. And they just signed a goalkeeper right now. This is terrible news for Matt Turner and terrible news if you're a U.S. Men's National Team fan. I'm glad you divided these up because I actually think you could make the case that both Ethan Horvath and Zach Steffen are winners this transfer window just because of what happened to Matt Turner, right? Because he right. is the incumbent and the number one, and when his job is in jeopardy, and it most certainly now is, that opens the door for guys who, hello, are playing, which I think Ethan Horvath and, and Zach Steffen are certainly going to do more of, at least in the short term. As far as Matt Turner is concerned, obviously them bringing in another guy, it's an indictment. This goal that he gives up, I mean, just could not have come at a worse time, right? Maybe one last chance to tell Nuno, hey, I can be your guy. And this is now kind of a disturbing pattern because this isn't the first job he's lost, right? He loses the number one job under Nuno. He lost it under Steve Cooper, though he did get it back. And if you go back to his days at Arsenal, Herc, he had the number two job there and lost it in the Europa League. So this is a guy now who has had three different managers give him a Premier League job, whether it was a number one job or a number two. And that's three different managers that have said, you know what, you're not good enough for that job. And that to me is worrisome, primarily for Matt Turner's competence, because right now, Herc, we're looking at a situation where let's say Matt Sells is what he's advertised to be. He comes in and he's the number one. There's a chance Matt Turner might not play for the rest of this season heading into Copa America. And if that's the case, Herc, you say he's the unquestioned number one. I got to ask you something I've asked you plenty of times before. How strong truly is that stranglehold? Because if he doesn't play, can he really maintain that spot? Yeah. Listen, that's up to him. You spoke about mentality. I mean, Zach Steffen lost it, and he was the coach's guy. So I don't know how strong that that number one position is with Matt Turner right now. It's especially with goalkeepers, it's all about confidence. When I study this and I thought about why production put him as the losers, the U.S. men's national goalkeepers, I can't think of an era in my lifetime where there were no Premier League starting goalkeepers for the U.S. men's national team. Mm -hmm. No first choice, first team goalkeepers for the U.S. men's national team. So I'll give production that.